Hey guys, um, I was about to start a new um, project today and I just decided to record this beginning process of, of just uh, sculpting the torso. And uh, you guys, just to show you guys some of the techniques that I've developed over the years to just speed up the process here and just trying to get something that I can, uh, that I can use very quickly. As you can see, I started from a sphere and I'm just kind of uh, very messy kind of extruding, masking and extruding uh, the neck out of that sphere. And I'm, and I'm quickly trying to get the shapes that, I, that I'm going to need to sculpt that, that upper torso. And I'm using a lot of masking and just pulling stuff around. You're going to see that this process now, it's, it's uh, very messy in terms of construction. I'm not worrying too much about uh, my basic construction shapes like getting the rib cage and, and getting the neck very clean. Uh, at this point, I feel that I've developed enough or, or that I've done this enough that I can just quickly drop in the shapes and try to get the result that I want and, and kind of manipulate into the, the forms that I want. Um, and I don't really recommend you guys doing uh, in this way if you're starting. Uh, I think it's much easier if you go and, and try to build a rib cage uh, using that first initial sphere, trying to get the shape, kind of like drawing when you're trying to get that, that nice uh, that shape for the rib cage. And then from there, you can insert a cylinder um, and then another sphere for the head and then start welding those together but uh, I do have that those shapes in mind when I'm doing this but the way I do it it's a little more uh, freeform uh, where I'm just putting a lot of the shape in place and then, then manipulating uh, in place. I'm using uh, clay here just to try to get some volume for the head and I'm quickly gonna start using clay to uh, indicate the volume for the shoulders uh, and then using Dynamesh to just uh, recalculate the topology so I can keep working. Dynamesh is very useful for that. So I can uh, very, uh, it's a very non-destructive way where I can quickly uh, just just pull the shapes and then and then re-dynamesh the, the model so I can keep sculpting. Uh, you saw that I just moved down a little bit more of the rib cage and that's kind of what I was talking about when um, when you when you if you're first starting just to try to get that sphere to look like that I'm, I'm just pulling shapes around just trying to get that rib cage and then adding the the pecs like the the chest muscle on top of that to create an interesting volume inflating that shoulder mass that i initially put in put in place and i think at this point i have a very clear understanding of anatomy and proportions for the for the for the human anatomy that i can uh, just pull something into place if I feel that that is just looking a little weird and that's the, the tricky part when you're starting and that's why I do recommend you, uh, you guys do like drawings and, and just really sketching in paper just the basic anatomy and proportions in 2D so when you go and jump in, in 3D you have kind of a formula in your head that you can just execute on. Uh, here you see I'm gonna start adding more volumes and like you can see the lats in there but there's so many muscles that overlap each other in that area uh, that I'm thinking about but I'm not really representing it here and you're gonna see me slowly start to uh, draw those in place and try to get you know kind of the the breakup of the muscles that that will make it more realistic but for now I'm just uh, literally just trying to get something in there so we represent that kind of v-shape for the for the back you're gonna see me uh, also just extruding something for the arms now, uh, and I, you could also just uh, append it, append a cylinder in that case. But I'm just using the extract so I can quickly get something that already looks like a cylinder and it's already like uh, close to the position that I want. So from here, you know, I'm kind of just getting the basic shapes of the arm, getting something to represent the triceps. I'm gonna get something to represent uh, the biceps as well and then quickly just draw the, the form of the arm in place. Again, I'm not spending a lot of time trying to think about what muscle goes where. At this point, I think I've got some uh, clear understanding of just the marks that I have to do to indicate the anatomy. And that's what I think, you know, kind of uh, speeds up the process for me. What I've done this enough that I kind of know that, you know, where some of these things should be and I'm hoping uh, that by watching this you can kind of see or, or pick up some things that maybe will speed up your process. Uh, I've, I've seen a lot of artists that, especially in 2D, where 
they quickly can indicate forms and and I think if you can pick up on why they're doing certain things, it helps you uh, understand a little bit more of what the artistic interpretation is of the of the human body and not so much like muscle by muscle, like memorizing the names and all that stuff. Like sometimes it's, it's more important to just know what you have to put in place and know how and know enough how it works for when, when it moves, you know what what it what it happens, right? Like what the muscle does. Uh, you don't have to memorize every single uh, muscle or sculpt and crochet to have something that uh, you know that, that will make it believable. I think, especially you know, talking on the art side, there are a few shapes or like big grapple, uh, big muscle groups that you have to understand that you have to put up on put on your on your models to uh, to make it believable. And the same thing for proportions, right? I think at, at this point I have a, a good understanding of what a good proportion, especially in 3D, would look like. And sometimes it's not really uh, realistic, but it's just uh, something that feels natural uh, with the subject. Like in this case, I think I have a good, a good, just memorized and a good understanding of what uh, the proportions should be, like from the arms, you know, to the, the to the torso, to the the neck and the head. And that's what I'm quickly throwing in, in here. If you guys uh, find yourself struggling with that early on, uh, grab some reference, grab some 2D reference, uh, search for uh, like eight head proportion uh, human reference. So you can kind of, um, it, you know, at, at the beginning, just match one to one to some, some good references. Uh, you can see here, I'm using uh, them standard to just dra uh, draw the, the body. And that's what I, Again, just touching base on this again, I'm not sculpting every single muscle at this point. I've done this enough. And that's why I, I keep bringing this back of like repetition. Uh, I've done this enough where I know for me what makes the best result. And it might not be for you, but hopefully this shows you at least uh, some of the things that I do that, uh, that I found over the years that works for me. But quickly drawing the shapes uh, that will give me the results that I want. So you saw me just drawing the serratus, kind of the all those muscles like uh, along the ribs, and now I'm doing the same thing for the back, just drawing that in place. The back, the back is very complicated. There's so many muscles with the, the trapezius that goes down on the on the back, but there's only like three or four big muscle groups that you need to put in there. So just keep that in mind. Like try to. Look at references. Look at other other people's models, and uh, sometimes it's it's better to do that than to look into just ecrochets or um, like a, like scientific anatomy books that will give you like every single mus muscle group and fibers and all that. Like sometimes you just need to first break down into bigger shapes and understand what how does how do they work. So then you can go back and go a little deeper onto why why certain things are look the way they do or why like some references look different than others depending on the pose that the person is making you can go deeper and start to understand but you can quickly see here that just by drawing those quick lines i can very quickly get to the result that i want um, as a base as a start i have an, a very solid indication of the rib cage with the abs going down um, and, and this is the kind of a, a little formula that works for me it's uh it's a little hard to break down i've, I've broken it down before with one of my uh my, my courses my it's on my gumroad courses of anatomy of really breaking it down like what goes on my you know on my head when i'm doing these things but you can kind of quickly see the process here and and how I, I quickly arrive at something that looks pleasing and and has the big muscle groups that from here i can uh, go go deeper and, and keep working keep refining keep adding variation uh, sculpting a little bit better like just the fibers of the muscles and uh, of course like doing the rest of the body but I'm hope I hope this this helped you guys uh, this is some of the uh, techniques that I use when I'm starting something from scratch like in this case a, a human torso and I'm hoping to do more of these videos in the future for different subjects and and I'm hoping that uh, some of you guys find this helpful and uh, keep practicing you know that's that's the big secret secret just uh practice uh practice practice all right guys 
I'll catch you later. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, hit me up if you have any questions and I'll, I'll try to answer it as much as I can as, as we go. All right. Take care.